some very interesting comments from one Casanova regarding 6 9 As you are aware, 6 9 is going through or has gone through um, a, a big trial in the US uh, concerning his involvement with the Nine Trade Gangs, concerning his involvement with gangs in general in New York, concerning the whole way his career went from zero to 100 in the space of a year. And then it kind of culminated in this amazing kind of, you know, for made for made for blockbuster TV um episode where he essentially ended up snitching on his entire crew but if you look at it from a humane point of view it's not the most amazing situation because the people that were involved in it their lives have completely been ruined by this kid who they decided to kind of use as a clout machine use as a kind of you know a, a human cash point has now effectively ruined the entire lives of everyone involved in the situation for some for some people you'd say you know the kids knew what they'll get the guys knew what they'll get themselves into right those street guys getting involved in street business doing things in a street way there's only one way you can end right especially if you're not doing it in a smart way and it, 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 we can't never say we can never say um they were doing it in a smart way because some of the stuff they were doing it was so brazen so ridiculous that it kind of made you think of like these guys actually had brains in the middle of their heads um but a lot of the conversation is centered around six nine being a, sn- a, a, a rat whether or not six nine is going to be able to come back off of this in his career and be able to have a career because now we've learned that through his testimony of snitching on these other um co-conspirators or other people that were in the gang and you know detailing the little legal activities they were doing he's now going to get a, a reduced sentence it's gonna the time that he served in jail is gonna count towards time served so essentially he might be able to get out by the beginning of next year now especially since they've moved the court date forward and um, they want to get things out of the way quickly as possible and lock those other guys up so they want to get him out um, he's supposed to be rejected witness protection and he wants to just come out and resume his own career which is very interesting too and it's just gonna be an interesting case to see how it goes but a lot of people are saying he's a rat how is he going to be able to survive in america new york but it's not really a big that big of a deal i think if we look at people like George Zimmerman, right, the kid that get killed, um, the guy that killed Trayvon Martin quite brazenly, was, was you know, um, there was a lot of talk beh- about, you know, what he had done within the black community, and you know, I'm I'm not one to be telling anyone to do anything, and you know, I'm not condoning violence, but there was this idea that he was going to get assassinated on the street, something happened to him, but nothing happened to him. He was perfectly fine. He was going on talk shows. He was acting a fool on social media and uh, we kind of assumed i think now we've kind of realized that he maybe is suffering from some sort of mental illness he's not really all there in the head but he's living a pretty normal life nowadays again it's not maybe the best of lives but he is still living and breathing nowadays and nothing's really happened to him and i think six nine if you wanted to could probably do the same thing i think of six nine the same way i think of kind of roberto saviano um the guy that i read who kind of uh, wrote the book called uh gomorrah are you guys aware of it uh roberto saviano he travels around with uh with with um a security detail everywhere he goes because he wrote this book called Gomorrah that essentially lifted the lid on the entire Italian um, mafia or Italian organized crime that was going through Italy, Spain, parts of France. This is the guy here I got on screen about Saviano. I recommend if you haven't checked out Gomorrah, it's a TV series on Sky now at the moment, it's available. And he essentially has, he's, he's detailed it in a lot of conferences, he's given a lot of interviews where his life has been completely ruined. It's been a cur- blessing and a curse of books he's written because it's allowed them opportunity to kind of go out and kind of license his work, write screenplays, you know, get loads of deals, endorsements, loads of, you know, appearance fees, blah, blah, blah. But essentially it's kind of, uh, it's kind of put in a position where he's had to put his family into hiding. He's had to kind of hire a security detail around him and he kind of feels as if like he's always got like a target on his back. People are following him wherever he goes. And he lives in a, a pretty secluded lifestyle, but he's alive and well and thriving in some regard so i think if he can do it with having the entire italian mob after him i think um, six nine is going to be able to get away with it just fine but um essentially um casanova had some very interesting comments regarding the six nine case which i don't think a lot of people had the same sort of things and i think i want to speak about a little bit about it and i think there's a lot of truth to what he's saying here but this is casanova hot 97 uh giving an interview with ebro and those guys and speaking about six nine his whole situation and yeah interesting take i think from casanova truthfully that was like the number one artist in the world Truthfully, like, I never saw, in the course of 12 months, in the course of 12 months, I never saw 10 minutes, a million views. And I feel like even the people that's calling him, whatever they call him, yo, yo, get that first shut the because y'all was sucking it. So, me, I'm mm, not that yeah. bad to say about it. Y'all deal with that. <laughs> the, all the guys with him, I don't feel sorry for them at all. I'm saying they went, they went, they went the wrong route from the, to begin with. Who even care about them people that he took off the street? Because nobody cared about them before they met him. They was bums. So who gives a? F- at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Nobody not jumping out the window. 
and do nothing to trade it. Truthfully, that was like the number one. Which is a very good point. He makes a, cause some pretty some pretty good points there. Number one, six nine was one of the you know he. I think a lot of people said when even when he got locked up that they missed him on social media, right? There was always something happening. He was kind of the essentially he was the apex of mastering how to kind of manipulate social media to your to your will, right? There was always something happening. There was always something that he was kind of at the butt of the joke of. He just knew how to manipulate social media, play that trolling game, be a bit of a walking living meme, and he did it in the right. He did it probably the best anyone kind of done it of this new generation. Then you have on the side of it. He actually made some really good tracks, right? Tracks that I think even when the album came out, people were very surprised of how good it was. His collaborations, every single was in the top 10 on Billboard 100. He just had a very keen eye and ear about, you know, being able to hone that sound and do it in the right way. Really, really precise of how he did his artistry. Obviously, the street affiliation had some kind of weight in it, but the street affiliation was odd because the way they had it, the way they did it was so heavy handed. Um, the way the Nine Trade Bloods went about kind of, uh, you know, having this guy be one of their artists and kind of putting him under their wing was done in such a heavy handed, such a brazen way that it kind of seemed as if like, you know, it was complete amateur hour. Like, how could these guys be an organized crime unit when they were just doing things so ridiculously obvious and they were inviting all the attention to come on them? If anything, they should be, they should have been completely quiet. They should, they should have probably had him as far away as possible from their illegal activity so they can continue going on that way. And I just didn't see what the, what the, what the benefit was for the nine trade blast to have six nine stand next to them i know what it did for six nine right but it didn't have this it didn't have any reason why they should they should be standing next to him they should have pushed him as far away from them as possible if they had to extort him for money to fund their own legal activities fair fair dudes do it right tell him to venmo you tell him to cash up you but why are you getting him involved in your illegal activities in the moment right why is he holding guns why is he in the car when you're robbing people what what is happening here this is absolutely ridiculous so that was the thing that was kind of um crazy and of course these guys are career criminals right it's not as if they're like kids that are just you know again it's unfortunate how it's ended they're snitching on them but this is sort of the life that you've kind of chosen but for six nine especially the people in the industry that are like you know poo-pooing him the problem with the industry is that as we know it's an incredible fickle industry music the moment he comes out and he gets some sort of traction again the same people that were calling him a rat and all whatever it may be will be the first people that would be kind of questioning whether or not they should be collaborating with him. And that's where the morals and the principles that some people have go out the window because people don't really have morals and principles for the most part. People just generally go to where the point, maybe not the point of least resistance, but they go to the places where they are assured of where they're going to get something at the end of it, right? Like, I know I'm going to get a check. I know I'm going to get something from standing next to this 6 9 guy. So I'm going to put my moral principles to one side and just stand next to this kid. That's what most people do. And um, you're going to see that happening very, very soon because I think 6 9 situation is going to be a, a watermark situation or a landmark moment for the entertainment industry or for the world in general, especially when you look at the stuff like Trump because people actually, I think people think the world operates one way People think that, but in reality, the actual reality of the situation is that in the same way that there were people who were like secretly telling, who were publicly saying they would never vote for Trump, and when the election came around, they all privately voted for him, and he won, everyone was surprised. It's the same way you're going to see people that were saying, oh, 6 9 should have a career, you snitch, the, the, the rat, whatever regard it may be, but in private, they're saying they can't wait for him to come back because it was fun having him around, right? That European tour that he did with the interviews with Tim West, we were, you know, I couldn't take my eyes off them, right? He went and met, met fucking Balotelli, hanging out, doing that shit. That was incredible stuff. So if he is able to come back out again, resume his career, it will be a moment of reflection because what it will show is that people generally don't really give a shit as much as people think they do. What they care about is the music. What they care about is the content that's being produced from it. All this other stuff, if anything, this is going to add to the add to the kind of narrative. And if 6 9 is able to sit in prison now without drugs, without alcohol, and think of it, because let's think of all the things that he done beforehand where he was under the influence and, you know, sniffing and do whatever he was doing. Imagine he's able to think clearly about his approach as he comes out of prison, right, post-snitch, and do the actual marketing run of this properly. He could find out, he could find a way of packaging the content or packaging what he'd done, testifying in court against his co-defendants or against his fellow gang members. He could find a way of twisting it clever in a clever way where it makes it seem as if it was all a long-term plan. This is all part of the long journey he was meant to do. Because if anything, if he wants to, in, in, you, I wouldn't doubt if he came out and started saying, you know, this solidifies him as like a legend forever, right? No matter what happens, if he dies tomorrow, I'm going to be a legend regardless because I was able to have this career within a year period, go to prison with this massive kind of, you know, Rico charge in the back of my neck, you know, snitch, come out, 
have another year and then if anything happens at the end of it but like that's an, that's like an amazing kind of like fairy tale run that he's had um but yeah i think it's gonna really make it's gonna fuck people's heads up when he comes out and he's able to kind of start his career up again he's gonna fuck his heads up because what you'll see with the record industry no one from the no one from the, if you've if you've noticed no one from the entertainment industry has ruled him out no one from the radio has said we're not gonna play six nine no one has said that so far you know there were people like that had cancelled chris brown they cancelled r kelly um who else they cancelled um who, who they cancelled a the person who dissed six who dissed um who dissed nipsey Hussle after he died who was it man they cancelled them they cancelled a lot of people right but they no one's cancelled six nine and said we're not going to ever play his music again on the radio no one's done that and the same people that were clamoring to get him on the radio to have the interview you sh- for sure breakfast club are going to interview him when he comes out of prison that's that's for sure going to happen there's going to be a lot of those things happening as it as it as it kind of transpires that he's kind of come back and he's more comfortable and again, I'm interested to see how the story pans out. Interesting way to go about things. But I, I respect Casanova for taking a very um, different approach to it and kind of seeing it from a completely different view. Like, look, this guy was never kind of somebody who I kind of fought as a street guy or as a gangster. I'm not surprised at anything that he's done. The guys that he's hanging around are complete bums. Why would they think that this guy was not going to rat? That's that's their fault. They fucked up, like, for associating themselves with him. And by and large, he knows how the game is. You know, the entertainment industry is fickle. Once he comes out of a hit and a banger, it will be forgotten. No one will, no one will remember about all the stuff he did in the, in the past. Uh, absolutely for sure. That's a, a very astute um, observation there from Casanova. So I recommend you check that out. If probably a full interview out now on Hot 97, but who wants to listen to Ebro and that talk? Probably just check out that Shane Ritten article. I'll, I'll link it in the bio for you guys to check out. If you need 